All right. I don't really know whether that previous recording paused, but that discussion won't hurt anything. Anyway, so it has now processed it, and now you have all the data over here. So let me just uh, get rid of this extraneous stuff. So you see, you have calendar entries. Um, and if you click on that, it will show you, I guess, I, think, I don't remember anything good in the calendar entries, but let's see. Yeah, well, I remember, it had just the usual default stuff, New Year's Day. So it doesn't look like they've added any custom stuff. Um, Martin Luther King Day, Groundhog Day. I'm seeing them appear down here. So there is a calendar with some issues. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make two parts. Then you have communications accounts. There's device and phone. And when I looked at these, uh, the device account just had some kind of meaningless long number, but the phone account had a bunch of phone numbers you could read. So I think these might be phone numbers that this device had. I'm not sure if these are phone numbers that made calls into the device, but from the way this is labeled, I think these are phone numbers that this device had attached to it, and therefore I'm a little confused. Yeah, I don't really know exactly what this is. It would be a thing to go read in the documentation to find. I'm not sure why we're seeing phone numbers. I don't understand how the device would have more than one phone number attached to it. I'm thinking these must be phone numbers that were he made calls to. Anyway, there are some phone numbers there. There's GPS, which is pretty cool. Your phone has a GPS, and it has 3,700 entries here. And this has got latitude and longitude very frequently. So you can tell exactly where this person has been. This is pretty exciting data. You know exactly where this phone has been, so this obviously would be really important. You can find out where this person was at certain times, and therefore, you know, whether they were in a location and committed a crime or not, that sort of thing. You got a list of all the installed programs with dates. A bunch of them are, of course, default installed by Apple, but there are several extra social networks added to this phone, and you can see when they were added. You got SMS messages. There's only about 10 of them, and they're pretty boring. Um, they look like just ads, like Snapchat code. He added Snapchat, something from Total Wireless trying to sell things. But anyway, you can totally read the SMS messages. Um, and in fact, I was very surprised to see there was a Signal message here. Now, the whole point of Signal is Signal is an encrypted messenger. You get Signal so nobody can see your messages, but apparently if it pops up an alert on your phone, that's not encrypted. So this is a thing to be aware of. Even if you think you're using an encrypted messenger, you can see that some parts of it are not here. Now, I, I didn't see all the messages from Signal, but the alerts pop up here in this messages section, or maybe Signal sent an SMS. I think this is when you originally signed up for Signal, it sends you an SMS to verify. That's what this is. So it's, I don't think it's a pop-up on the screen. I think it's just an SMS. And, but anyway, it's a thing to be aware of. Then there's program notifications. And these, I think, are the things that pop up. So uh, Proton, this is what I noticed. Similarly, Proton Mail is another encrypted mail service which people get for privacy. And yet, it looks like the Proton is set to pop up a box every time it gets mail. And that pop-up box is stored here unencrypted. So that's a thing to know. Um, there's recent documents. I didn't find anything very exciting there. And the programs that have been run, which also didn't seem as useful as I thought it would be. Uh, I guess you can see maps and such. You can see when they open certain apps and things, so that might be useful. And screenshots, I had high hopes for, but as far as I could tell, nothing here made any sense. I couldn't find any way to actually get visible screenshots from any of this information, so I'm not sure what the point of that was. A USB device attached. There was a USB device attached called Power Log Flared Device, and I don't know what that is. I wondered if it might be how they took the forensic image, or perhaps it's some kind of automatically generated thing. And then uh, the wireless networks, I couldn't make any sense of that either. So this is very common when you're running forensic tools. Some of these are just giving you strange internal logs that are hard to interpret, but a lot of them are easy to understand, like the SMS messages and such. So anyway, you get a little bit of practice analyzing an image, and uh, it would take some research. Like, I'd like to understand what those phone numbers were a little better. It would be something to uh, look up in the documentation of uh, this, or in practice, you would just test it. That would be the best way. Just get a phone, 
make your own image, make some calls, and see what it really does. You, that's the real bottom line when you get confused, but the documentation would be a place to start. So anyway, that's the iPhone Analysis Project.